there are songs that I've written in times of joy, great, great happiness, or also in times of great sadness, just in those total opposite experiences of emotion. And they're simple songs. And honestly, every single song is about remembering how to love ourselves because no matter what experience you have in life, it's all about remembering that self-love and that that love is within us and we can't always source it from other people. Like we have to remember that it's alive inside of us. And Aloha beautiful viewers and listeners all around the world. My name is Krista Ralaxmidetten coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. Welcome to this episode of Abundance in Action podcast. And today we have a very special guest um, actually on the line from Oahu in Hawaii, Noelani Love. Welcome. Aloha. Thank you so much for having me. Aloha and mahalo for allowing me to be here on the podcast today. I'm delighted and honored. Aloha, my beautiful Abundance in Action podcast listeners and viewers. My name is Krista Ralaxmi Detten. I am the host, producer, and also editor and manager of this podcast. I do it with love every time. And I welcome you this next episode, which will be an additional episode with our podcast guest, who you already met. And I know that you will enjoy it. As always, we believe here that each one of us, we have a treasure box inside. And once we open it, we can start to live our dreams on our terms. And after you have listened or um, also watched the podcast, please, please so kind and share it on your social media platforms or groups or with your personal connections. You can also leave a like, a comment, and also a little review on our iTunes page or on our Facebook page, and you can find it with Abundance in Action podcast uh, username. And as always, um, be so kind and also download the episode in our Botbean uh, page, because when you download, the numbers go up and the numbers are an ascent nowadays. So you can help to uh, help us to build and grow our beautiful podcast, which has uh, brought lots of inspiration and motivation for many people and will so also in the future. Please enjoy. Lots of aloha. And till the next time, mahalo. I think you have also a very special connection with dolphins, right? Yes, 100%. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. the water, just like you're saying, like we're over 70% water in our physical body. So of course, you know, we are so connected to the water and, um, and to answer your question about the dolphins. Yeah. I swim with them a lot in the summer here on the North shore of Oahu. And it's such a special experience every time. I mean, I pretty much during the months of July and August, like that is my main goal every day is to swim with the dolphins. <laughs> and it's funny because I have like this attitude of like, I can't believe that people are doing anything other than swimming with the dolphins right now because it is so magical and like what else could be more important than this right now on the planet <laughs> yeah. and 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 here on the north shore they specifically like to visit during those months and so i i work a lot less during those months because it's just the time for me to connect with them and to receive their wisdom it is truly magical to be able to swim with them and witness them. And I think kind of what I was sharing earlier about that, that childlike innocence and playfulness, that's what the dolphins remind me of. They're always reminding me to play and to have fun and to simply enjoy. And they're all about pleasure. They're all about play. And then the sounds that they create, they're, they communicate through these clicking and like yeah. little, um, it's almost like a whistle, but it's a very high pitched mm -hmm. sound. And I've gotten really good at speaking dolphin. And so as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I go in, I'm like, I turn on my dolphin language and I start speaking dolphin. Yeah. And 
you know, people around me are like, wait, is that the dolphin? I'm like, no, that's me. And, and I'm <laughs> communicating to them. And a lot of times, you know, I can't see the dolphin yet and I can just hear them underwater. And so I'll just like start, start speaking like, Hey, I'm here. What are you guys doing? You want to play? And, and just to have fun with it. And, um, it's, it's such a magical experience. I could talk about swimming with dolphins all day. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, um, I remember the first time I uh, I was bought, actually, uh, there was a Swedish lady who had a retreat on the Big Island and she didn't do much of preparation. So we were just kind of like, um, you know, going in and trying to figure out. And if you have never like worn, you know, mask and snorkel and fins, it, it feels like you're some kind of robot with like so many things and to figure out how it all like kind of works, take some time. And I, I bet if I would have taken a photo of me like swimming with all that equipment the first times, it must have looked like like a square was trying to like, you know, <laughs> swim in the water. And I remember I was looking at the retreat leader and, and she had been coming and going to Hawaii like 20 years. And she looked like almost like a spaghetti in the water, like so fluid. And I, it, it almost felt like she didn't have bones. And I couldn't understand it, like, how is this even possible? But um, as the years went by, then I spent also more and more uh, time in the water. And I understood also that that rigidness was because I hadn't been so much in the water and also that my body was almost like a square. I needed to, you know, involve myself more in water activities and then now when I'm in the water, like people are also like, wow, you, it seems like you don't have bones. So, yeah, wow. I've got to that point, too. So that has been quite the transformation, too. Like the body is more fluid. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Interesting. Yeah. 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 And the dolphins are like that, too. They just they just glide yeah. so beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And all these experiences with dolphins as well, um, you know, uh, no issue for me to get up very early then because it's like, you know, like Christmas morning uh, going there. You never know what will happen. They always have gifts and messages and you have no idea. Sometimes those downloads like uh, scroll down like later and then you like realize, oh, that was probably from that dolphin swim that day, you know. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. I actually had a moment this past summer in 2020 when I was swimming with the dolphins and I was all by myself. Um, none of my friends were able to come that day. I usually like to go with a group of friends and I don't recommend to anybody to go swimming out in the open ocean by themselves, but I do it often. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> I just had such a magical experience. There were probably hundreds of dolphin around and it was the biggest pod I had seen all year um, or the biggest the pod had been all year. And there were tons of babies everywhere in the pod, like probably like two feet long, just little, little babies. And I got out of the water and I usually will go, um, either naked or topless, one of the two, uh, just because I can and because I just want to be as free as possible and like really embody my dolphin self. And so I came out of the water and I just remember this song downloading through me. And uh, I'll share the first verse because that's like what what sticks out the most. I haven't recorded this, but this will hopefully get recorded this year to share with all of you listening and the world. But it, the first verse is, I've stared out at the ocean. I've swum deep in her sea. I've been looking for love everywhere and it lives within me. And just like remembering that, you know, there's so much beauty out there. I've, I've stared out at the ocean. I've swum deep in her seas. I've been looking for love everywhere, but it lives within me. And recognizing that we can continue to like look externally for the answers and look outside of ourselves for something beautiful. But the love is always inside of us. And that's yeah. what they reminded me that day so beautiful and now talking a little more about the water you are also now involved with um, uh, something very interesting kongen water can you say some words about that too 
Yeah, absolutely. So I've been drinking Kangen water for about five years now and almost six. Wow. And Kangen is a Japanese word. It means return to source or return to origin. And so what the Kangen water machines do, they're actually machines that are water filters and they ionize or electrolyze the water. So there are... Um, Platinum or sorry, titanium. No, excuse me. There are platinum plates that are dipped in titanium and they, no, hold on. Excuse me. Titanium. They're titanium plates that are dipped in platinum. And what those plates do is they electrolyze the water. So it separates the ions. And so it's very hydrogen rich water and it's very antioxidant rich. As we all know, um, free radicals are what cause the aging process, right? So when we have more antioxidants, it helps to re reduce the free radicals in our body. And so that's what this water is. The Kangen water is simply antioxidant rich water. It's hydrogen rich. And so our bodies are able to receive this water. And it's basically as close that you'll get living in a house to drinking natural spring water. We don't all have access to natural spring water that's been cleansed and purified. So that's what this water is. It's basically what the word Kangen means, return to source, return to origin. It's as close to that natural spring water as you'll get. And so again, I've been drinking it for five years and I was noticing um, just through actually jewelry design and through being on the computer all the time and also playing the ukulele that I was getting um, some severe carpal tunnel issues with my joints. And so in drinking this water, I noticed a dramatic reduction in the inflammation of my joints and the pain that I was experiencing. And this, you know, I'm 37 right now. So as a, as a early 30s, a person in my early thirties to be experiencing the early onset of like some joint problems and inflammation and um, oh, what's it called when you have, when people have joint problems, osteo, not osteoporosis. It's um, arthritis. No arthritis. Thank you for that mm -hmm. word. <laughs> arthritis. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was starting to develop arthritic symptoms. And so what this water did for me is I noticed the reduction of those symptoms and the reduction of pain in my body. And so I didn't want to um, do it as a business at the time. I wasn't interested at all because I was so busy with my jewelry business. And then once I realized, Oh, I can share this water and, and more people will be able to experience this. And also, you know, it's a really great way to create more financial abundance for myself. And I started to get involved and it's been really helpful, especially during this time of COVID uh, to supplement and support my income. And I actually got a second machine so that I can have one in my workspace so that I always have access to this good water at work and as well at my home for my family. So it's been a beautiful journey of exploring financial freedom through residual income, which I am also experiencing through my music. But with the Kangen water, it's on a, on a bigger level. The commissions are really awesome. And then I'm also sharing health with people as well as an opportunity for them to create wealth in their life. Yeah, it's such a beautiful tool and um, also to complement your health and invest into your health it's um, it's so necessary especially these days where there are so many toxins and you don't even know if you buy the water from the shops like what what's in there you know so yeah. I just recently myself finished a um, 90 day wild fit challenge where we were also encouraged to, you know, drink different waters. So just kind of simply start with, you know, adding Himalayan salt and, you know, different things. So it has more minerals and um, uh, would be better. And also increase the um, amount of water you drink per day. Because I think most people are constantly dehydrated and they don't even know it, you know. And those... Yeah, those two things already helped a lot. And within those 90 days, I released uh, 17 pounds of my body weight, which wow. is like eight, eight kilos. 
and also so many other things um, kind of dissolved or I let go. And one of them was also sugar addiction. And as I know, also one of your passions is healthy living or healthy food also, like maybe you can share some tips, like how is it you keep yourself healthy with food? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your journey. That's so amazing that you, you know, you just shifted a few things and you probably feel so much better, right? And yeah. It's like energy bunny all the time. <laughs> yes. Good. That's so great. And yeah, I think, you know, for me as well, when I was becoming a mother, um, I recognized like, oh my gosh, like I was 23 at the time when I was pregnant and I realized, you know, I don't really know how to take care of myself. And so I started to do research and I started seeing a naturopath because I wanted to have a midwife for my birth. Um, and I just realized that a lot of the stuff, the habits that I had weren't actually healthy and that I did have a sugar addiction and I wasn't even aware of it. And so um, cutting sugar for me has been a big one and um, cutting out alcohol as well. So I don't drink alcohol and also cutting out gluten gluten. Um, I know in other parts of the world, it's not as bad, but here in America, most wheat is filled with toxic chemicals. Uh, the Roundup is really popular here. And so um, glyphosate is in a lot of the wheat and gluten. So cutting out the gluten, cutting out sugar and alcohol really shifted my lifestyle and it helped me to transform and become more present because I wasn't having those cravings of needing the sugar, like I'm sure you've experienced as well. And it almost, I would say it helps me to just like have more control over my lifestyle because I don't need to have sugar. Um, and also like having more presence as well. So I definitely attribute our food as medicine and like what we're putting into our bodies is definitely going to affect how we feel, how we act, how we connect with people. And um, it's so empowering to take control of that aspect of your life and to recognize like, oh, my food is my medicine and it's what's going to keep me feeling healthy and feeling strong and feeling clear and not getting sick. I think that's something that, you know, has not been talked a lot about during this time of COVID is like, okay, we'll keep your immune system strong by staying hydrated with good water, staying healthy by eating the right foods and, um, and just choosing and being, being intelligent and conscious about what you're putting into your body. And I think, you know, we, some people might think that it's harder for some people to access healthy food. And yes, I say, I would say that is true. However, like choosing fruits and vegetables any day, even if they're not organic, even if they, you know, may be processed in some way, choosing plant over processed is going to be key. And so I think like for anybody that's just wanting to start off that journey, like something that doesn't come in a package versus uh, or versus something that does come in a package is most likely going to have more benefit to your body. Yeah. yeah, so so agree. And one of the big takeaways I took away from that uh, ninety day challenge was that you know your health starts with a choice. So it's a choice, like what do you eat, what do you put into your body, and how. And I actually did a little deeper research about like labels on, you know, all the packages and different kind of like processed foods. And I was so like surprised and also angry that most of that is loaded with sugar. And if not like openly written that, that it's sugar, it's actually hidden sugars, which I discovered then are having like 200 different names that you you can like hide it under so um it's it's like uh yeah it's it's a little process here <laughs> to wake up and think like okay uh do i want to like what kind of lifestyle do i want and how do i want to live and do i want to be here when my son is gonna have you know grandkids and stuff or what is it you know what what is my why to invest into my health you know Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that you brought up a really good point. It's just looking at the ingredients list on any package that you purchase. And if you, they always list it um, 
by how much or the the things at the top of the list are what there is the most of in that. And so considering is sugar at the top of that list, can I actually pronounce most of the names on here? And if I can't pronounce them, it's usually some kind of chemical and maybe Googling like, oh, I don't know what this is. Let's Google it and find out what it is and how it's created and what are the effects of that? Has that ever been studied? And so I, I try to shop mostly at farmer's markets and our health food store and from our own garden as well. So I would highly encourage anybody that's wanting to explore healthier lifestyle. It's just what you said, Crystal, it's, it's a choice. And, and to also just know that like, it's a journey as well. There's so much to learn and like, one little step at a time is key. Even if it's just drinking like two more glasses of water a day or quitting drinking soda, like that's a huge milestone and to celebrate those things, because if you've been doing those for your entire life, it's really hard to kick those habits and celebrating every small step of the way. And the journey is so important. And also uh, what was very crucial for me that this program had you know, coaches and group. And when I had really low moments, I had that support. And I know that people, when they are starting to step away, those bad habits, um, that's so crucial to have maybe even just a friend who already lives the healthy lifestyle to be your accountability partner so that you can keep yourself on track. Because otherwise, the influence can be so strong and pull you back into that bad um, habit again. So that was also very crucial to me and uh, very helpful. Yes, I love that. Accountability is so important. Congratulations. Good job. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was quite the journey. <laughs> and yeah. another, another thing you are really fond of and I think is also very crucial during the times where we are now, especially when it comes to self-care, is uh, yoga so you have done so many different uh, types of yoga uh, that when I was even reading the name of it I was like okay I have never ever heard of those kind of yogas you know so uh, can you tell a little bit about uh, yeah you had kundalini vinyasa buddhi and then mantra so like what is buddhi buddhi yoga yeah great question so <laughs> buddhi yoga it's um it's been created by different women. There's a, a few different lineages, but essentially it's like a vinyasa flow, but with dance included. So instead of like standing in your warrior two, like very linear, very masculine stance, like maybe you'll start to like circle the hips or you'll like move the arms. And so it's a very feminine way of incorporating movement and dance into a vinyasa practice and this really spoke to me because I'm a hula dancer and I also have a background in Tahitian dance which is a lot of hip movement and um, finding that fluidity and that more feminine movement in a very masculine patriarchal lineage um, in studying vinyasa and having attended a lot of different types of vinyasa based practices even ashtanga or dharma mitra it's very um, structured it's not as fluid it's very linear and so uh, with a, a dance background like myself uh, it's really fun to incorporate that movement and also creates a lot more sweat and it's like cardio movement as well so I really enjoy that and I love teaching it. Again, it's just really fluid and it feels really good for the body for me as a having a dance background. You piqued my interest, so I have to figure it out now what it is. So it sounds very like intriguing for me too, because over the years I've tried all kinds of like different types of yoga. And uh, so far, the only one which I've kind of um, grew fond of was aerial yoga because it was also more fluid and more like like different kind of movements and stuff but so many times I just I almost like fell asleep in yoga classes because it was just so boring <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah yeah and I still love vinyasa and I, I have an appreciation for all different styles of yoga but I think like for example in the booty yoga you'll be in downward facing dog or 
Adho Mukha Svanasana and you'll be like shaking your butt in the air and like bouncing both heels at the same time so that literally your entire butt and your thighs are shaking and that shaking movement, you know, that in Tantra or, you know, in tribal cultures around the world, that shaking movement allows us to release stagnant energy from the body. And so it's really powerful to just release whatever does not serve us and to come back into wholeness as ourselves. It's really fun. Yeah. Highly yeah, recommend so it. True. I like yeah. all kinds of like new things and which are a little bit like, you know, revolutions out of the ordinary is like, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to do a little booty yoga uh, for my Video. YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Need to yeah, share that. And I, and I can try. <laughs> yes. So now I would like to talk a little more about Hawaii. Um, you know, you live uh, there now for quite many years and, when we lived there too, like I got to know lots of locals and some who had like moved there and it, it was very different. Like I have anthropology background and Hawaii has been one of my main like uh, subjects to research. And I'm so, so blown away till this day about the cohesiveness, cohesiveness as well, holistic um, side of the lifestyle as well, the worldview and how everything is connected. Like even, you know, the, the old system, how the tribal communities were, you know, cooperating, you know, all these like areas and districts which were going from the ocean up to the mountain and, um, you know, aloha, hoponopono, um, it's just so much and all of it, it's just so exciting. It's like being in a fairy tale, like every day when you are there or even just reading about it. Um, what's your experience now? You have, you know, you are native Hawaiian, but now you are there. You are a different generation. You're bringing lots of fresh ideas. You, you also, you know, package aloha in different ways, like, how has that been? Like, have people been very like welcoming or is there also resistance? Like, no, this is the only way you should do it. Or, you know, how, how is that? It's a really great question. And I, I'm actually very challenged by that in, um, in the, the work that I do, because I do want to bring authenticity and I do want to be able to relate to the current day, um, situations and the future generations that are coming. And so even for me to create the song Ehumai, for example, with an ukulele melody was challenging and there was some resistance in that. And, um, you know, because Ehumai is traditionally chanted with that very guttural, Ehumai, like very traditional way is how our ancestors would have said it, um, the chant. And to put that to an ukulele melody was very out of the box, but it came very authentically to me. Uh, I was actually in Bali at that time when that song channeled through me in that way. I was, I had just arrived in Bali and I was on a women's retreat and I was really missing home. I had been in India for three weeks prior to my Bali trip. And I was going to be away from home for five weeks. So I was missing Hawaii. I was missing my family. And I just sat on my doorstep at the retreat center that I had just arrived at and started playing the ukulele and decided to just sing a homai. And so it just naturally came to me. And I just was like so blown away by the beauty of it and the I guess just reminiscing back of back home and my memories of Hawaii that I was crying because it was just such a release for me to be singing in Hawaiian. And I just knew like, Oh, this, this is a really beautiful way to share the music. And I, this wants to be shared. So I actually asked my Kumu, my Hawaiian Oli or chant teacher, I said, well, what do you think about me sharing this? And she, she at first didn't really like the idea um, just because it's not how she was trained and it, it wasn't how it was passed down to her. And, and she said to me though, um, her name is Ai Ai Beyo and she's from Wahiwa. She said to me, Noe, if the music is moving through you in that way and you, you feel called from your heart to share it in this way, 
then you have to do that if that is what feels right to your heart. And so um, I just felt like I was blessed with the ability to share it from her, from my teacher. Um, but I have received, like, if you look at my YouTube channel, I might have deleted the comments, but there were some comments on there on the Ehomai, like, this is not how it's supposed to be done. This is a disgrace to Hawaiian culture. And, you know, people are going to have their opinions and projections. And I think what I have to remember as a human being on this planet right now is that things are always evolving. Life is evolving people are evolving, our species is evolving, and we have to evolve in order to survive and not to just survive, but to thrive. And so if the ukulele melody version of Ehomai is how people are connecting to Hawaii, is how they're opening up their hearts and how they're feeling a sense of healing, then I feel like I'm doing a service to the world by sharing what authentically was moving from my heart out into the world. Um, so yeah, I think like bridging the two worlds of this very structured uh, patriarchal system with that more feminine, natural way of living is definitely very hard. And it's a constant battle in my mind. And I just know like, I'm in both of those. I'm a part of both of these systems. And how can I do my best to bridge the two? And how can I do my best as a mom, as a partner, as a friend to see both sides of the coin? And even for me, growing up on the mainland, my father is completely white, Caucasian man. He's blonde and blue eyed, but he's with this Hawaiian Chinese woman. Like I am both of those uh, structures in one. And so I can see both sides of the coin and letting go of judgment and resistance and like just being authentic and vulnerable and who I am. And I think that's what we all just really seek. And what we need is to be able to be ourselves without constant judgment, because it's clear that the current structures that are present in our world aren't serving the masses and the majority. They're only serving a few wealthy minority people and corporations. So I think it's it's really just about evolution. Yeah, and I, I see that as a like we're entering an evolution or yeah of of love. Like how can we just be more loving? Like that's what we all came here to do. And I think that's what the earth is constantly teaching us. And I also, um, last year in March, when all this uh, COVID thing started, I actually felt like Mother Earth was finally taking a stand, like, hey, guys, you have to stop, like, almost like all the inner feminine, like, energies were, like, kind of getting the loudspeakers. And it's like, okay, we are going to take the lead now because it has been, like, too long. And um, my teacher, Eric Edmades, who is uh, the uh, creator and founder of the WildFit program, he said that, you know, we have reached out to a really interesting point in our history called self-care crisis. And I so agree with him because it's like so many times when also clients come to me, we like figure out that, you know, self-care is the first thing they have to like, you know, change. And it's so natural to me that that comes first, but for many people, it's still like, you know, the last thing on their daily routine. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And that was, that was a big lesson for me when I became a mom, it was like, oh my gosh, I can't take care of this baby if I'm not taking care of myself. Like, how can I provide milk, provide anything for this child if I'm not taking care of myself? And I think that it's so important for us to remember is like, how do we take care of ourselves so that we can take care of each other? Yeah. So, yeah. So how has it been now? I know some of my friends in, uh, on the big Island has, have given us a um, little overview of what's been happening now. Um, like, you know, nature wise, everything is like the beaches are basically healing um the one peach where i was volunteering with coral uh, protection and stuff um the coral has actually returned um, there's lots of progress that way um also many of the turtles have um returned and 
more dolphins dolphins have, have been also sighted and so on. So nature seems to do really good, but uh, people were really struggling. I, I've had like several people who lost all their jobs and like nothing there, like basically you had to move like online, the only way to survive. How has it been um, in Oahu? What's, what's your experience and observation? Yeah, thanks for asking that question. I feel 100% that nature has been so happy to have less people on the islands here in Hawaii. Um, right away last summer, I noticed that there were more turtles, the fish were coming in closer, they just seemed more abundant in the water. I was seeing a lot more than I normally was. Um, I think because there wasn't as much toxic sunscreen as well in the water, the water seemed so much clearer. And it's really interesting, um, you know, that you're asking this question right now, because we actually had the biggest flood yesterday here on Oahu that we've had in all the years that I've lived in Hawaii. So I've been here for, yeah, almost, I've been here for 16 years. Um, and the biggest flood happened yesterday and our entire yard was like a pool. The ocean is chocolatey, chocolatey brown. I've never seen it this dirty. Um, and I feel, and, and even on the east side of Oahu, some homes were completely flooded and like the rivers were just gushing. And even on Maui, a lot of people's homes were flooded. And right now, as we're talking on this podcast, the rain is, is coming back. It, it gave us like a pause for about half of the day. Um, and it was sunny earlier and now it's coming back. It's starting to thunder and rain again. And I feel that, you know, Mother Nature is such a voice right now. She's speaking to us and she's saying, humans, you need to wake up. I'm going to survive. You're choosing whether or not you as a species want to continue being here by your actions. And so I think, you know, all of the, the businesses having to move online and less traffic, less cars is really good for the environment. I think having less people on our islands because we can't handle so many humans at the rate that we were before with the tourism that we depended on as a as an economy um i really feel and i feel honestly like really bad for all the people in the businesses that had to suffer i can't imagine what they've gone through but i think it's an awakening it's a spiritual awakening that we need to shift collectively globally as a human species to decide whether or not we want to continue to live on this planet earth because earth will decide for us if we don't. And, um, and I think, you know, those of us who have been doing the work and been connecting with nature, supporting local farmers, growing our own food, being aware of how much we consume, we're, I think, honestly, karmically a little less affected and those that have not been aware maybe are feeling the repercussions and that may seem harsh to like say or to hear, but I mean, everything is connected. And in Hawaiian culture, it's all about relationship. When, when we recognize that we are part of the whole and that our actions are affecting everything, then we can recognize our oneness and really creating harmony depends on everybody being in harmony and depends on us being in harmony with nature. And so until we are, it's going to be challenging for humanity to continue at the rate that we are. So I hope that COVID has awakened a lot of people and is shifting the consciousness. I do see that happening. And I just think that humans are really slow to take action until, until things hit rock bottom people don't want to change. And so that's just the reality of it, myself included, you know, if things don't hit rock bottom, then I'm not actually going to change or, you know, like I didn't, ex I didn't understand that there was pain in my um, wrists until it actually got really painful to the point where I couldn't brush my teeth and like I needed to change and do something about it. So I just know that it's a ripple effect and each of us has our part to do as we continue to 
awaken and share our ideas and our gifts with others that it'll go out there just like the Ehomai song did for you or just like the Ho'oponopono practice is all about forgiveness and love like when we embody what we want and what the healing that is working for us we can ripple that out and allow others to experience that as well yeah and in a way it almost feels like mother earth is doing its own hoponopono for the world you know making things right absolutely absolutely yeah. Yeah, it's uh, quite a journey. So now uh, to wrap up, I have this uh, really uh, lovely question. I ask every guest who is coming to our podcast. So imagine that your earthly journey comes to an end and um, you are going to other dimensions or wherever you choose to go. And then uh, people will look back and like kind of reflect like, okay, who was Noelani Love? And what was her legacy? So what would you like your legacy to be when you are gone? That is so such a great question. Thank you for asking it. I was actually journaling about this yesterday. The, wow. leg- <laughs> yeah. the legacy that I want to leave behind is one of love and one of authenticity. I want to be remembered for, um, yeah, being a light and for shining my light really brightly and being kind to others. And I wanna be remembered for uh, the gifts of my music. Like I would love for people to be singing the songs that have come through me for for generations to come to empower and to inspire them. I know that this human journey is not easy, that there are so many challenges that come with being a human. And I want to remember, be remembered for shining my light and to inspire others to shine their light bright as well. So beautiful. Amazing. Thank and you. Um, I know also you are working on your next album, right? Right now? Yes. Yes. So can you say a couple of words? What's going on? What's cooking? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been sitting on it for a few years and uh, it really, it's about finding the right producer to work with. I loved working with my producer in Bali for the last two albums and due to COVID, like I can't go to Bali right now. So I've been just asking the universe, well, who is this other producer that I'm going to work with? And I finally found one. I'm so excited. Um, and his name is Chris Rockamwell. That's his DJ name is Rockamwell or, or also known as Chris Pineapple. He wears a pineapple um, head when he DJs. <laughs> and so he's known around the island for that. And uh, there are songs that I've written in times of joy, great, great happiness, or also in times of great sadness, just in those total opposite experiences of emotion and they're simple songs and honestly every single song is about remembering how to love ourselves because no matter what experience you have in life it's all about remembering that self-love and that that love is within us and we can't always source it from other people like we have to remember that it's alive inside of us and so I think there will be about 11 songs on the album. I think I'm going to release them, each one as a single first, though, so that they each get their own little moment to shine and then put it together as an album. But the album is called The Ripple Effect. And just like I've been talking about in this podcast, you know, everything we do is karma. Every action that we take will have another action, um, that's created because of that. And so it's, we're all ripple effects. And so I hope that this album is a ripple effect of love and inspiration and empowerment for the listeners. Yeah, And you also just released a podcast called ripple effect as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about the ripple effect right now. (laughs) The, the course that I'm teaching for, for voice and ukulele instruction and creating songs is also called the ripple effect. Um, wow. course online so I mean it's a everything brand. it's a brand yeah it's yeah. it's a whole other side of what wants to move through me I'm just letting it letting it move through and how often do you do those voice uh, workshops or online classes 
Yeah, I did. I've been doing them um, about two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. So in case um, um, I have to see when this uh, podcast will be launched, but uh, when it comes out, then they can just check in with your website and see when is the next one. Yeah, absolutely. And the goal is that after I do this next live one, I'll have it as a package so that people can purchase it and do it as a course at their own pace. But then I'll have live check-ins um, so that people can do a live session with me as well. And so people can do it at their own pace and just explore, but still have a connection to ask me questions and get feedback as well. Mm -hmm. really cool sounds very exciting so yeah. can't wait wait to see and hear more about it <laughs> thank you yeah and uh, to finish up I also I have this uh, magic little bag where I have these little ribbons with questions so mm. some years ago I started to play um, also joyfully with words and some really uh, fun questions almost like affirmation questions came out and today um, I thought like, oh, let's take one for our podcast with Nolani and see what the question will come, you know, and these are always so like spot on. So the question we got was, what can you choose to be and do in order to go with the flow instead against the current? Mm. Can you repeat the question one more time? What can you choose to be and do in order to go with the flow instead of going against the current? Hmm. I guess this would kind of go with what you said earlier in my bio that my motto is to flow like water. So how can we be fluid? How can you choose the path of least resistance? yet still be authentic and i really love that we have here two words be and do so be and do in that flow you know both of those that you can also take action and still be in the flow and then you yeah. can just be that flow so it's like the masculine and feminine and the numbers i always also have numbers because i i also deal with a uh, new time numerology so the numbers are 65, six is um, like the divine feminine, also the flow, emotions, authenticity, like, you know, all of that and also trust. And five is the number of fire and also transformation. Uh, so we put them together is 11 is the master number. And together it's number two, which is the dance of the masculine and feminine coming together and co-creating from that. How beautiful is that? I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you so much, uh, Mahalo. And I wish all the best to all of your projects. And I'll uh, keep following you. And I hope that this podcast will create many more ripple effects uh, out there in the world from our co-creation here. Thank you so much. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Yeah. And to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for being here today. This was um, quite a mouthful, so probably worth of two episodes. And um, please, as always, like, share, comment. And if you have a little extra moment also, don't hesitate to also comment or also uh, leave us a review to our Facebook page or to uh, iTunes and may your life be filled with ripples of aloha. Thank you. Yeah.